Hey there, Tammy C. Walker here, life coach, therapist, social worker. Hit subscribe and hit like. I create content and videos to encourage others. And my hope is that my trials and my tribulations that I have gone through and are going through can help you. Let's go. Find something you cannot afford to pay for. Tap into it. Today's topic is five ways to beat depression. Now, this video, I have to put this disclaimer out. I'm not talking about people that battle with severe disorders, such as bipolar, schizophrenia, severe where they need, you know, outpatient hospitalization or inpatient and heavy medication. Some of these tools will help them too. But more or less, I'm referring to situational depression. For an example, you've gone through a nasty divorce. It's got you really down. You just lost your job. Your house, you uh, foreclosed on your home. Maybe your teen um, son or daughter is giving you trouble. A grandchild is giving you trouble. You've lost your spouse. You've broken up with your girlfriend, your boyfriend. Um, you know, all these things that could cause a severe stress. Illness, like me when I went through cancer or maybe a different illness, a bad car accident, a bad accident that's cost you to have um, back injuries or, you know, it's a lot of things that can get us really down when we get thrown off our square and it affects our psyche. When you're used to providing for your family, you used to being in good health, taking a walk and your health is compromised in any way, that messes with your mind. Um, it's like when I went through, um, you know, having cancer, it played on my psyche. I wasn't per se depressed, but it messed with my mind. It had me scared. You know, when I was first diagnosed, I my, my eye twitched for two weeks. I was in shock that I was given this diagnosis. Not that I was above it, but I was only 36 years old. And I hadn't ever been sick. It just came out of the blue. And that's what shocked me. But here I stand before you, so telling you we can beat this depression or at least learn how to cope with it. So I'm going to give you five tips and I hope they work and just do me a favor. Give it a try before you say, I tried that. That doesn't work. Try it and try it consistently. And then you can say without a shadow of a doubt, okay, yeah, that might not work for me. Okay. So tip number one, the most important, reach out for support. If you're feeling suicidal, I will have a number in the body of this video call the suicide hotline prevention um, phone number and get help. Do not be ashamed. They're there to help you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. This is what I went back to school for, to help others with anxiety and depression. And we, we are here for you. This is why we do what we do. So I don't want you to have that shame attached to feeling low. It happens to the best of us, but it's all about getting the support and help that you need. For some, it could be a psychiatrist, it could be a psychologist, it could be a social worker like me, a therapist like me, or counselor. Um, it could even be your pastor or someone in, in the church that you really trust. So don't be embarrassed to solicit help. If your employer offers the EAP sessions, a lot of times it's six for free, roll right into the seventh using that same insurance. You may have a copay. If you can't go every week, like some people say, I can't afford those co-pays, go once a month, go every other week. Get the support, rally around whatever it is that'll help you. If you are facing alcohol abuse, AA meetings are all over the world. It's some um, right by your house right now as I'm speaking to you, it's one going on. So if you have trouble with alcohol, drinking, you know, the help is out there and the same with trouble with drugs. Those meetings are going as we speak in your neighborhood. If you just get on the internet and type it in, you'll see it's one a few blocks away from where you live. Most people, unless you live in a very rural area. You got to solicit help. Don't try to fight it on your own. Don't isolate. Don't drug yourself up. Don't sex yourself up. Don't go gamble whatever money you do or don't have, don't do it, don't do it. 
Get help, get help, get help. That's number one. Number two, got to stay busy, stay busy. If you are in a place where going to work, going home, depressed, going to school, depressed at school, depressed at home, you have to fill up your time if you can, if you have the energy. When you come home from work, you come home from school, have a plan. Today, when I get out of work, I'm going to go for a 30-minute walk. Do that. Get your favorite meal. Get, get a good movie going. Know when you come home, you're going to watch something you enjoy. What about a good book? Something that can keep your mind going. If you have little nieces and nephews, they're, if they're playing softball, go watch them play. Hook up with a friend. I mean, hook up like that, but hook up and spend some time with a friend, coworkers, whatever it is that'll keep you busy. I remember back in like 2002 and three, I went through my divorce in 99 and I really wasn't dating cons consistently. So a lot of times I would be alone and that's when those ruminating thoughts would start. Oh, I hate being alone. Oh, I feel down. I feel depressed. I got so sick of that crap. I just grabbed my keys and went to Borders Books. Books. And I started doing that. I would just go to Borders Books, buy me a mocha, cap cappuccino, whatever, something, and read books for like two hours about, you know, study self-help books, motivational books. It really worked. So you'll be surprised at some of the tricks that can be mood boosters. You just got to try. I mean, with every ounce of your being, try. You have to pretend as if your life depends on it because it does. And if you have the will or the ability to be able to push yourself, just push yourself. Do your best. And if you feel those ruminating thoughts coming, that's when you just hit the door. Go for a brisk walk. Even if it's kind of chilly because I live in the Chicagoland area, even if it's cooler, that cold air is going to help you too. And that's another thing about, I'm kind of going back to one of my tips that I haven't given, but it's something about moving and being out in nature, sun and the wind, it will um, re-energize you. So don't, um, you know, miss out on being outside. That's one of the biggest mood boosters as well as taking a nice shower, some about a hot shower. It will really re-energize you. So that's tip one and tip two. Tip three, I sell doTERRA essential oils. I use the most lavender, which is not my favorite, but lavender works for a lot of people. Peppermint, I love. It works better with my body chemical. And I love wild orange. I diffuse with wild orange and lemongrass. But wild orange is a mood booster. So what you would do is take a couple of drops of the oil, and it doesn't matter what oil you use, do not get it in your eyes. It will burn. So please avoid the eyes at all costs. But you take the oil, inhale, you just want to inhale it like four times. The wild orange is a mood booster. If you are fighting depression or feeling ran down or just down, take the wild orange, drop each, put it on the bottom of your feet. Um, that will reach, go through your pores really quickly. I, I, I dab a drop here, drop there. I hit the back of my ears and even like the back of my neck. These are all good pressure points and mood boosters. Recently, I was with a friend, two friends, and we were at dinner. And the one friend just kind of looked real off, um, like something was going to happen. So the other friend said, are you okay? And she was like, I'm starting to have a panic attack. And I had some peppermint and oil in my purse. So I said, open your hand. I put like three drops in there. And I told her to inhale it over and over. And then within two minutes, we looked at her and we said, well, she said, I actually feel better. So the peppermint oil really works for anxiety as well as lavender. Lavender is good if you have trouble getting to sleep, and peppermint oil too. Same thing, the wrist with the lavender, here with the lavender or peppermint oil, or you can mix them together, back of the neck, and you want to inhale. Lavender is real faint to me. That's why it seems like it doesn't work for me, but it does. It really does help a lot of people with anxiety. Mood boosters would be wild orange, peppermint. I'm going to put the link in my video. So... Try the essential oils. I learned about them a few years ago. A therapist I was going to see, she pulled them out. That was years ago. So that tell you how long they've been in use. So that would definitely work for you. So we've gone over the three tips. Let's go with tip number four. You cannot go wrong with meditating. 
Meditation is a form of mental calmness. Get earbuds when you meditate. And if you only want to do five minutes or 10 minutes, YouTube has an abundance of free meditation. But do it with the earbuds so the outside noise won't throw you off. Do a guided one if you're not familiar and let your mind be free. The beauty in meditation is when you're done, you are going to feel calmer once you keep doing it day after day. Try it. You know, I try to tell some of my clients, they're like, I don't like meditation. It doesn't work. It's something to be said about things when you don't even give it a chance or when you don't try it. You have to try it. Nothing in this life worth having is just going to come and drop in your lap. You got to fight like hell for your peace, your joy, your happiness, your health, your peace of mind, your sanity. You got to fight and try the meditation. Give it a try. And after you tried it five, six, seven times, if you feel like, oh, this isn't for me, then don't do it. But give it a try. You know, nothing beats a failure but a try. Nothing beats a failure. Last but not least, exercise. Tip number five. When you get the happy endorphins going, there's no denying it. You're going to feel better. As a runner would tell you, the runner's high. When I play tennis, game over. I feel good for two days. That tennis sticks with me for like two days. And I'll tell you a story about the tennis. When I had chemo the second time I got sick, I was off work for like three months. So I go back to work and my coworker, he was like, why did you stay all day? Because I did my eight hours. So when I got out of my chair, it was like, I felt like a robot because chemotherapy is poison. And it will stiffen those muscles because your veins are being pumped. Your bloodstream is being pumped with this toxin and this poison. So I'm walking to my car because we had a garage then at work. And I had to walk like the 10 men from the Wizard of Oz because I was so stiff. I was like, oh, my God, why did I do eight hours? I probably should did half the day. So needless to say, my boyfriend and I at the time, he, I said, let's try to play tennis. He was like, are you sure? I'm like, I want to play tennis. It's going to help. The next day when I played tennis, I came back in there walking like a million dollars. That's just how quick that tennis re-energized my body. It got my blood flowing and I just felt so good. So it shows you the power of exercise. Brisk walk does wonders. The air hitting you in the face, the sun beaming on you. You're going to feel better swimming. You cannot go wrong with swimming. Kickboxing. I did that a few months ago. Amazing. Hot yoga will change your life. Give it a try, especially if you're battling with depression. People have told me yoga saved their life and changed their life. So give all of these things a try. Now, at the end, I want to tell you this is kind of like a just an extra. If you're at work and you hate your job and you're battling with depression, bring in your music with your earbuds if you can listen. If you're in your truck or whatever, bring in positive readings. For me, someone was kind enough to type up some prayers. I've been doing those prayers for the last two months. And I feel so good. I really do because I was having a challenging, rough year. It's been one of wacky years. Wacky. But it's getting better and better. Every month, I feel my strength. I feel like the old me is back. And I'm so grateful. But I give credit to God. And I give credit to those prayers. I've been doing those prayers. And reading Psalms 91. I know. I get it. Everybody don't believe in God. Everybody don't believe in the Bible. I am never the one to judge anybody. Whatever floats your boat or whatever you do, take it with you to work. Because sometimes that's where work, work is where we really fall off or you really can get really down because you don't want to be there anyway. So get your positive words and your music, positive YouTube videos going on your lunch break. Go for a walk on your lunch. Go outside and get some fresh air. Don't let that job destroy you. Do not let. And it's the opposite. Sometimes jobs and work is therapeutic and people that are battling with depression or different things, they bury themselves at work. So it can go either way. Anyhow, thank you for watching. Please take care of yourself and use the numbers in that video and the information to uplift your mood. Drop me some comments if you battle with depression, if you have some tips, if maybe a family member struggle with it, how you maybe help them, or maybe pass this to someone that could help them. Pass my video, share it. Tammy Seawalker, life coach, therapist, social worker. And as always, take care.